Okay, so let's very briefly now just look at a few key differences between um, using a recorded file, a file for a recorded movie from a file versus a live capture object from a live camera. So um, <clears throat> we saw that there that um, well, we could make a new capture object, and we have to give a width and a height, a frames per second. We have to use the keyword this. All of the same thing is true with a movie object. Actually, not. <laughs> point of my thing is. The same thing is not true. We do have to make a, use, make a new movie object, and we have to use the keyword this. But we don't give a width and a height, a frame rate. What we need to do is reference uh, a particular file. So just like you could load an image from your data folder, you can load a movie file from your data folder. And then this is a P image. So you can use the image function, the tint function. You can look at the pixels. But um, uh, we need a few more key pieces. Um, just like we had that capture event, what we need a, a movie event where we're going to uh, read images from the movie as the movie's playing. Let's give us the current frame, the current frame, the current frame. But I think a bit more important than that in terms of the difference here is that there are some functions like jump. The jump function allows you to jump to a certain spot in the movie. So if you want to, uh, whenever the user clicks the mouse, go back to the beginning of the movie, you can do that by saying jump zero. And this is in seconds. Processing uses seconds to, um, to mark what point in the movie, you use a floating point number. So you could say if a key thing happens at you know, 103.7 seconds, um, you can jump to that spot in the movie. Uh, the time function gives you the current moment in time, where is the movie currently. The duration function gives you the length of the movie in seconds, which is a useful piece of information to know. If you want to go to the middle, you go to duration divided by two. And there's also some functions like speed, which will allow you to speed up the playback. So if I put speed and I put the number two in here, it's going to play back twice as fast. You can actually use a negative number to make the movie play in reverse but only certain codecs, codec being the format by which the file is encoded, how that movie file was made, support that. So there is some bugginess here with, with, speed, with, with reverse, with speed in particular, and there's often even a little bit of bugginess with using jump and that sort of thing. Um, but for the most part, you can use these functions to really mess around with how you play back a movie. So let's just, um, let's just come over here and kind of see that. I'm using a sample movie file that's in all of the examples that come with processing. So if I were to change this from capture to movie, and I'm going to say make a new movie, and the name of my movie file is called uh, transits.move, and uh, I don't, with a movie, instead of saying start, you're going to say play, and better yet, I can actually say loop. What loop will do is when it gets to the end, it will start, so if you want a video to loop, and then instead of capture event, uh, we've got a movie event, and then I should be able to draw it. So if I run this, we should see this uh, video file uh, playing back. And um, as you can see, in the data folder, there is just a, uh, that, that movie file is in the data folder. There it is. Here it is being displayed in the processing sketch, and it's looping. And just to see a few of these features, if I were to say uh, video.speed4 and run this, uh, you should see that it's playing four times as fast. I could certainly try doing something like, uh, you know, uh, I have a rate which map mouse x between zero and the width, between zero and four, and then I could say movie.speed r. So this is me just dynamically in real time. Oh, it's called video in this. The variable name is video. Here, what I'm doing is saying like, okay, well, depending on where the mouse is. That's how fast I want to play the movie, so I can like slow it down, or I can speed it up. And you can see there's some jumpiness. It's not as perfectly smooth here, but this, I, this is the kind of thing that you can do. Play it back in reverse. I can mess with the pixels. I could stop it. I could pause it. I could start it. I could read. You know, anything you could do with other images, you could do with a movie file, too. So I don't want to get, um, let's, just, uh, let's just look at jump. Uh, just as, and I'll put in mouse pressed here just to show that that works. I'm going to say uh, movie.jump and at to three seconds, wherever it is in three seconds. Uh, it's called video. I keep remembering that. Okay. So this now it's playing back, and whenever I click the mouse, it should jump to that point 
uh, three seconds into the, to the file. So you can see here um, a lot of, uh, you know, some basic manipulation of a video file you can do in terms of stopping, starting, and jumping around. But I just wanted to have a quick video that demonstrated some of these key features. And, you know, as an exercise, you might just go back and say, ah, I made some stuff with static images. I made some stuff with uh, live capture. Let me see if I can slot in a movie and manipulate its pixels and do, try one of these, those other examples with a movie file as well. Okay, that's the end of this video, which was only five minutes and 30 seconds long. Excellent. Okay.